Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting your day out with me. I'm Jenna Stopper. I'm going to start today's show off by talking with an icon here in the Keys. Joy Stahl is the creator of the Nutcracker Key West. This is one of the largest productions to ever play on a Key West stage. It is also one of the most magical productions. Joyce has spent so much of her time producing, directing, and creating the Nutcracker. Now, she created it in 2005, and that was just four years after the unimaginable loss of a child. Her daughter, Jennifer Stahl, was one of the victims of the Carnegie Deli murders that took place in 2001 and destroyed the lives of countless people. Joyce, it's a pleasure having you here. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Joyce, I really, really admire you. Mm -hmm. You have gone through some unimaginable things. And one of those, like I mentioned, was the death of your daughter, Jennifer Stahl, which happened in 2001. She was a dancer like you, wasn't she, Joyce? She was a dancer. She wasn't a ballet dancer, but um, she had a great talent for jazz. Mm -hmm. and, and she was in Dirty Dancing mm -hmm. too, wasn't she? She was in the movie Dirty Dancing. All right. And she was uh, the only one of the dancers because they cut all their lines so they wouldn't have to pay the union scale. And uh, so she was the only dancer that they left some kind of, um, let them make a, a noise. And she ha she's the one that makes the yell in the, uh, toward the end. Okay, okay, so that, that was And so her yell, her yell is in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Now, Joyce, let's go back to the year 2001 when so much happened for you. And, and this death happened in, in May of that year, right, Joyce? May of that year. Uh, it was like there was nothing had happened in New York City for a long time. Things were very safe, and it sort of started the carnage because after that was 9-11. Oh, oh and that's it was right. The, it was the first thing that happened. It was May 10th, mm -hmm. and um, these two guys, who Jennifer knew, um, and who one she was trying to get a job for, because he was in the music business, got all coked up in Brooklyn and decided they were going to rob her and came in and just, you know, shot all these people, shot five people and murdered three. Jennifer was having a party or a, a little dinner party that no, night, No, right? there wasn't, there wasn't any, she wasn't, she was, she had guests there from just the guess. Caribbean. Okay. And um, the interesting part of it is that um, she had, we had recently become reconnected and I had another apartment away from there that um, she was living in and I came to see her because I was studying Pilates in New York at that time, getting my certification and I was staying in that apartment, otherwise I would have been in that apartment and I wouldn't be here. But the two people that were supposed to be staying in the new apartment because I was there, were in this apartment. They were both engaged to be married. One, one's wife was pregnant, or to be wife, fiance was pregnant. Wow, George. Well, there was a purpose and a, you know, a reason that you were not there that night, but unfortunately, it's, your, your daughter was there. And yeah. I don't understand. I don't understand why. Joyce, the trial then, too. What, what was the trial like after this? I, I the trial imagine. happened a year later, mm -hmm. and the, the interesting thing is they, the first guy um, said that his life was over and gave himself up. The next guy, um, he traveled and they tracked him. The DA tracked him. They tracked him to New Orleans where his mother, I think, was, and all through New Orleans. And then they lost him again. And then the man, oh, I can't remember, I don't know his name, who has America's Most Wanted. The man who lost a child, yeah, who lives I in Fort Lauderdale, who I would really enjoy talking to. Mm -hmm. He put Jennifer's story on America's Most Wanted. Mm -hmm. And a woman who was having demo done in her house mm -hmm. recognized, watched that show that night, and recognized this man, the picture of that man, mm -hmm. who had been in her house doing demo. And she called the police. And the police... Um, Found, somehow, I guess from the contractor, found out where he was staying, which was in a shelter mm -hmm. in, um, in Miami. And they put a cordon around the shelter. And then they ran in all together. And he ran out the back door and ran up a chain link fence. 
and ran down the street and a police dog got him. Oh my goodness. But here, but he was like, I had just moved here. It was almost like he was like moving toward towards me. Towards you, yeah. And the night that she was murdered, they, they of course didn't know who these people were. <coughs> Excuse me. And so they were worried that, um, you know, they might be coming after whoever, me mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So they were very concerned that I did not go back to my apartment. Um, where the apartment, you know, where I was staying with Jennifer um, was supposed to be. And um, they, at one o'clock in the morning, they came and took me there because they were afraid I'd go back. And they were afraid these people might return. So, and mm -hmm. they really didn't know, no one knew who they were. Right, right. But they were caught mm -hmm. going down the stairwell on the, on the, on the camera. Wow. So well, that's thankfully. how they knew who they were, mm -hmm. and well, they caught them. Good, thankfully. And the trial, the trial was a month long, and they each accused each other of doing it, so they marched the juries in and out. It was a nightmare. It was <laughs> really stressful. Mm -hmm. Joyce, we it have to stressful. take a quick break. We're mm -hmm. going to talk more about mm -hmm. the trial and just more about everything you've gone through, but you have overcome everything. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us. We're going to take a quick break, but be back with much more.